process even after studies and they'll be able to help you and guide you you know uh, which consultants to go to in terms of your pr process um, so again, uh, we would highly recommend if you have any questions to keep emailing us. And um, as I mentioned, Student Solutions, we would be happy to assist you in terms of any questions regarding the application. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, we would be covering um, and what just we would be covering today. Um, okay, I guess <laughs> for Zoom, we don't have this being. Sorry. I uh, just to confirm the people on Zoom that everybody is listening and uh, like they are able to hear Ravneet and uh, the slide has been uh, shared, right? Can you please? Uh... Yeah, but everybody is able to hear you. And uh, once the screen is shared, everybody's able to see that, right? Just want to make sure on Zoom. No. On mute. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Give me. That's fine. Uh, give me two seconds. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna do one thing here. Okay. For people in Zoom who are messaging, yes, we would be sharing the screen in two seconds. I know you've been messaging here. I can. I guess I can. Everyone can see the screen now. Um, if you can thumbs up and say that you can see on Zoom. I know on Facebook everything seems good, but I just want to make sure. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. So um, yes. So this is something that we would be covering in today. Um, just to kind of give you uh, some background about Canada, I know most of the students who are coming in have already done their research. I so don't have to really mention much about it. Um, some of the expectations and what you really feel, um, how you can be your own boss when you're here, what kind of changes you see when you um, arrive or even in the next few years. Um, and again, how to contact us. So let's move on. Um, to just to give you a better idea and better understanding about this beautiful country. Um, and can we move into the next slide? Perfect. Okay, um, so just to kind of give you the background. So I came in Canada it was about six years ago. Um, and I, I, I honestly, I was doing my research and I'm a big believer of doing research before making any big decisions. And this is a huge decision of your life. So I recommend doing your research first in any country you're moving. So Canada, why Canada? A lot of students have questions and we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, immigrants moving just because of its truly multi multicultural environment. Why? There you will be able to engage with so many different cultures. It's so beautiful to see such a diversity in this country uh, I've ever, ever experienced in my life. And it's good because it's good for your growth, uh, good for you to, you know, grow. Um, they do have world-class education. And of course, we will be discussing more about the work experience and how about your quality of life and unemployment rate. It is a very low unemployment rate in Canada, which is great. But of course, what are your steps? Uh, it doesn't mean that everyone in Canada have a job or how you can land a job. So let's discuss more into detail about that um, in our next slide. Um, now in terms of, and this is very interesting and you probably will see in love. <laughs> um, so I, because I wanna make it a fun session and I want you guys to enjoy and um, really understand what it is. So some of the expectations, I thought that I would have and what were we the, what was the reality since um, I have transitioned from being a student now to PR. I, I could really tell in the, these six years how my life has changed and what I've learned and what not. Um, in regards to studies, um, a lot of a lot of students, including me, did thought that it would be easy just because I've done my bachelor's um, and I'm going to do my post grad here. So, you know, I, I'm good. Uh, but let me tell you the Study. So I came, I'm from India, so I know we have participants from different countries, they have different process. So make sure you understand that it will not be the same as your country and whichever country you are from, uh, please make sure that it's, it's not going to be the same. Every country or not even every country, different school, different colleges, different universities have their own way 
Um, so that was kind of, uh, for me, was a big hit because I thought it would be very easy, um, you know, just like in my country. But here, it's more about um, the entire process. Why? Because hey, it's that... Um, Ravi, sorry, uh, I think I uh, just wanted to recheck because somebody had said that they are not able to see the presentation on Zoom. Can you please, uh, okay. everybody can confirm if they are able to see the uh, presentation on Zoom just by sending a text saying on chat, yes, you can, please? Yeah, 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 I can see it too, yeah. Okay, okay, so there may be just one, one, two people who are, who are not, so those who are not able to see on Zoom, please just uh, re-log in, that's it. That's what you need to do then. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying in regards to the studies, of course, do your research and as Sakshi was mentioning before, this is your first step and this is your career. So you have to make sure what kind of programs you're going in and how your life would be because this really depends and I've seen a lot of students coming here and changing their programs and this would be hard on you moving forward when you're doing your work permit, when you're doing your PR. So make sure you do your research before coming in in regards to what programs you're coming in. Um, is that program good for your career path? So studies is really important because that really guides the whole process and the whole experience you will have in Canada. Um, so of course, in terms of the reality, you have to make sure and we will discuss more about some of the skill set that you require if you're coming to Canada or if you've arrived and how you will be able to learn those. Uh, friends, uh, they're easy to make as an expectation for me, it wasn't easy to make. I thought it was uh, like my expectation was that it was hard to make friends just because we have different cultures, right, and different communities, um, and people from all over the world. So I thought it would be hard to make friends. But in reality, people are so helpful there, especially Canadians here. They're very helpful. They'll be able to help you throughout the process. So make sure you do have that a, a social circle to enjoy because it can be um, a little bit stressful if you don't have your family, if you don't have any friends. So make sure you have good friends who will be able to um, you know, help you throughout this process. In terms of homesickness, um, some of you or some of you might not have the expectation that you'll be able to handle it um, easily, but in reality, it does take time. Of course, you're coming in such cold weather. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of cold weather and everyone who used to make fun of me that why are you even going to Canada if you hate winters? Uh, but honestly, it's not been that bad if you have, you know, if you have good clothing, it, it, it'll be fine. So I don't want to scare you guys off. I know a lot of people talk about Canada and they always say about the bad weather. It's honestly not that bad. Um, you will be able to manage if you, you adapt the culture. When you come in, you're ready for it. It will be fine. So, uh, but it, in reality, it does take a little bit of time. You might feel some kind of a homesickness. For me personally, I did not feel that kind of homesickness uh, uh, because I had good friends and I used to talk to my family every single day uh, with all this kind of technology, really. It, it is, it's kind of weird, but it's, it's also helpful, right? Um, now, in regards to communication, this is really, really important. Um, I also thought the same thing. My expectation was that it is a difficult environment to adjust in just because we come from different countries, right? Um, and our communication skills, it might or it might not be that good in terms of, you know, like my English wasn't that good when I was coming to Canada. I was able to understand. I was able to speak, of course. But I was under the impression that, you know, the accent here would be so much different. I would, I would have a hard time understanding this is it, it, it will be so hard and i remember the first day of my class i was still having difficulties understanding one of my professors and that was the first day of my school but uh, honestly the reality is that there every, as i mentioned earlier people are so friendly here they're so welcoming um, and you'll have a good experience so for the first day of my class when my professor she was talking and i was like i cannot understand her at all at the end of the session, um, I went to her and I'm like, I, I did not understand your lecture. So she's like, yeah, that's no problem. Just come come tomorrow in my office and I'll be able to explain you everything. That's how professors are here. They're very friendly. They make sure that you understand um, anything regarding your whole program. If you have questions regarding your text, your, they do have specific times to meet you in their office. So make sure you communicate with them throughout the whole process. But one thing I want to mention about communication it's it's not just 
people are friendly and you'll be able to communicate it's your communication skills as well you want to make sure that you practice and you really uh, take the time to understand them and understand your language and make sure that you are adapting to the communication skills here um, understand different kind of communication skills that works here some of the slangs that we use in our country probably be rude here so understanding and adapting that uh, communication skills could definitely definitely help you uh, time management we will discuss more that in later but um, here in Canada some of the most important skills that you need to have is and one of them is time management um, sometimes people do think it is easy to balance uh, but it's not why because uh, in my home country I never used to cook I never used to do any other job what I was doing I was just studying right we have family, we have friends there to support us. Here, you are just on your own. So you have to make sure um, you, you have to manage your time. You have to make sure you have time for your work. You have to make sure you have, you have time for your studies, most importantly. Um, and there's a lot, there, a lot of household job and household stuff as well that you wanna do. So um, time management is one of the key, key skills. Uh, job opportunities, it's easy to find in Toronto. A lot of people would say that, but in reality, and I also mentioned that before, that Canada has low lowest unemployment rate, and that's what I meant by it. It does have a low unemployment rate. However, um, Canada is huge, and we have a larger population in the, the, these big provinces. So as Sakshi was showing you the slide of the big provinces and cities, one of them is Toronto, right? We see a lot of immigrants coming now to Toronto. So the job market is different and it varies by different programs you're in. So if you're in engineering, you're in business, it really depends. But um, it, 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 you have to understand and it's, it's, it's about you, how you network, how you study. Um, it, it, it's not easy because in terms of finding jobs, you can still find different jobs through, throughout your studying process. That's not hard, uh, but you'd really have to get out there. Uh, process to become PR, we will discuss that at the end as well of this presentation. Um, a lot of people think it's quite easy. You'll be able to go by it very quickly. It is time consuming and it could be a lengthy process. So you have to make sure that you have that mindset before starting the whole process and we will go much more in detail. Um, moving on to the uh, next slide. Perfect. Now, this is something very interesting and I want to talk, I can talk about this for hours, honestly, but make sure if you have any questions, I just want to pop in and say, if you have any questions in your mind right now, if you want to ask something, just keep putting your questions in the comments box and then we will make sure Sachi and I to answer those at the end of the session. Um, in terms of the, um, the slide, and I want to make, make sure that you guys understand the importance of being a decision maker. Why? Because here a lot of people try, might try to influence you, even if they're friends uh, in regards to your program. So say, for example, uh, one of the things that I faced was my friends uh, really wanted to make sure that I am helping them doing their assignments. I am the one doing their homework. It does not work like that. You really have to understand that you are independent. You are on yourself. You have to make your own decisions and you have to make smart decisions right um you do have to evaluate your, your resources you know in terms of you don't have a job do you really want to spend so much money here a lot of students because they come here and it was me too and you will under you will learn these things even if i'm saying those it it really depends on different person to person and what their perspective is um when i came i felt so free that oh i don't have friends i don't have family you know, I can just do whatever I can in terms of like, okay, I can just go to the mall and do my shopping uh, for my college. I need this stuff. So you really have to understand and evaluate your resources and make sure that uh, you have that, uh, you, you keep in mind about some of the um, financial 101. You have to start that. So, you know, for me, the first thing was when I went to the bank, um, I met a financial advisor and I asked them, you know, what kind of steps do I need to take? in order to be like in a successful in the future in financially, okay? This is, I'm talking financially. So you do have to evaluate your resources and make sure you're ready from the first day. Um, here, it's not like back home. You have to make sure that you are understanding the entire process from day one um, and you have a set career path in your mind. 
um, some of the skills that would help you do that again as i mentioned time management planning organizing stress management now why i'm um, talking about these skills canada is more about skills than just your studies it is about studies too but not just about studies now i come from the culture where we don't stress so much about uh, skills we do stress much about your studies oh this person have bachelor's master's perfect let's get them to the job here it does not work like that you need to have certain skill set in order to be successful and these will help you start off uh, but these are not just the only skills that you would need so again time management now see say for example you are a full-time student you will be working at some point or the other um, i started working within like my second semester first semester i just wanted to try and settle in adapt in the culture i know a lot of students might start working right off but it really depends if you are ready for it i wasn't ready i took the time to really understand my college understand what we like the college has to offer um, and I'll go that in a little bit as well. And then start managing your time. In second semester, I had a part-time job, so I wanna make sure that I'm studying, I'm giving time for my studies, Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm working part-time, but do I have time for, for myself? And a lot, and including myself, a lot of people, a lot of students, international students who are coming here do not realize the uh, power of self-care. We are coming in here, you're putting all your effort in your studies and or in just either or but you're not taking care of yourself and that's where the stress hit in and so you have to make sure you're having a stress management and how you can do that college has so many events and activities that sometimes students don't even know so you get how you really have to get involved there um, you really need to plan and organize when you are working you're not studying when you're studying you're not thinking about work you're taking the time to yourself and that's really important. And one of the things that I used to do, say for example, um, how I used to de-stress myself was on Sundays, I would just you know, do like a dance session or go for a walk. So some things to really de-stress because it kind of becomes stressful sometimes when you have all these assignments. Now here, it's not just that you have one, uh, uh, you know, you don't have like one final exam and that's it. You have continuous assignments. Everything is kind of all continuing, so it it doesn't stop. So you don't you don't feel the burden of you have final semester or you have mid semester and you have to study. You have to keep studying throughout the whole semesters because the studies do have that kind of uh, the 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 structure is that um, here. But again, it depends on different courses. My especially business courses, they are designed. You have to have assignments, tests throughout the semester. So you really have that stress and you have to make sure that you're de-stressing. In terms of the jobs, um, this is really important. Why? Because here in Canada, volunteering is so important and I cannot stress that more. It is so, so important. When I came to Canada, I did not have any experience from back home. I did not work full time. I just studied and I came here to study more. But if I'm looking for a job here, if I'm doing any part-time job, they would need any kind of Canadian experience. And how you can get those Canadian experience? Volunteering. That's the most important thing. So, and I've seen people even who have like, they're multimillionaires who are running a big company uh, that we used to network with. Even they at this time of point is doing some kind of volunteering stuff. So how I started, uh, well, I started with Student Solutions. I was volunteering at a fair and then I met Student Solutions and see that's how I landed a job as well. Volunteering so important that you never know that that uh, volunteering could have maybe lead to having a job at the end of your you know program. Um, on campus and off campus jobs, there are a lot of jobs on campus. And again, a lot of students don't know about it. I had the ability to, you know, connect with some of the people. So that's what I did in first semester, guys. You have to have to take, um, you know, make sure you have your resources open, you know your surroundings. So colleges have to offer so many things. Now, as an international student, you're paying so much. Uh, make sure, and a lot of students don't know this. When you come to Canada, in your co college, university, whatever it is, they have so much to offer. They have so many free services that you can avail and they have student solutions. They have different clubs that you can join. And some of the people do not get a chance because they're so busy in doing their work 
or studies, they don't even know that existed. When I started working in college, I would say we had 60 students in my class. 45 students asked me, how, like, do we even have jobs in college? They didn't knew about it. So that's how important it is. An on-campus job could be really helpful because you're studying and you're working there, kind of your weekend, um, you know, you still have time for yourself. So that really helped me because I was working part-time, but I was also getting the experience of college. Um, and so you really have to make sure that you're volunteering in order to get that experience. And that's how I got it got started. For the resume, make sure you keep it updated. Um, what I used to do in the college, again, they have career services, counseling services, and they help you with, uh, do resume update, cover letter, prepare you for the interviews, all this kind of stuff, they do it for free. Uh, we have gyms in the school. We have uh, so many different activities and events. Uh, this would help you network, and we will talk more about networking, but it is so important uh, to understand uh, jobs and the, the services, basically, that are offered in college that could help you in your career path. Another good thing that is uh, job fairs, and you'll see whichever city you are in, sometimes it's held by, you know, within the city as well. There's so many different um, job fairs and uh, uh, another extracurricular activities that you can take participate in. As I mentioned, I used to do different kind of career uh, curricular activities just to de-stress myself and make sure that I have time for everything. Um, moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> Perfect. So changes in life again. Um, networking here is very important. Even if you've studied, but you've been just in your school for two years or three years whatever time it is, and you're not taking the time to socialize with the right set of connections, um, you're not um, you know, realizing the tool, LinkedIn is a great tool to connect with within your industry professionals. You really have to make sure you're taking the time out for yourself to network with different people. Um, one thing that I used to do again, um, I used to search on Google, what kind of events that are hosting near my school or near my home. Uh, where I can go and, you know, do some connection, make some connection. Now, there are a lot of job fairs that could happen, and then you can join those, and that's a good way to start and make th those connections. Uh, again, one of the real-life example is I started working with Student Solution as part of the job fair. I was working in a job fair. That's how um, me and Yasser met, and that's how I started working with them. So that's a, that is a connection that I made. Um, so that connection lead, uh, led me to this job, right? That, that, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so it's really important to network, keep net, keep networking, just keep talking to the people. Within, I'm not saying network is with friends. Friends is a different part of the story. This is really regarding your career path, how you want to grow. Um, and you really need that kind of set of connections. And you really have to make sure that you are taking the time to step out of the comfort zone. You're not staying just in that shell. You have to break that shell in order to be successful. Um, again, a, a short example here, and I, I know we are running a little bit out of time because of the technical glitch we had earlier. Uh, I was not, I always thought of, I need to take care of, um, I need to make sure that I'm taking out myself out of the comfort zone and how I did that. Um, I had my own friends and my group circle within the college, but I want to make sure that when I'm doing my studies, my group projects, I'm not involved with them whatsoever. So I made sure that I'm networking with other people in my class doing group assignments with them why this would help me understand different cultures first this would also help me gain more confidence in talking to people uh, understanding their method of learning and how i can be uh, you know working with them and why i chose not to work with my friends because i know them already uh, we hang out we enjoy but i did not want them to be a part of my uh, career. So it's really important to ha have someone you are working outside of your comfort zone. Uh, friends aside, you really need to make that network just for you to get some skill set. So like confidence, you need to speak up, all these kind of things. Um, so you again, networking is really important here and I cannot emphasize that more. Uh, moving on to the fun part, and I know a lot of you would be interested in that, uh, the PR process. Um, for myself, I did apply it by myself. I know a lot of students uh, say that, how did you do that? Because 90% uh, of my friend did apply PR with a lawyer. 
Um, but for me, I just did my own research. As I said, I'm a big believer in research. I did my research and made sure that, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing my, having my own documents in and then applied for the PR right away. Um, again, for PR, um, you have to make sure that you have certain amount of points. Uh, and again, that could be discussed. If you have questions, you can email us. It's a very lengthy process. I cannot go over, but just to um, go over uh, some of the details that I want you guys to mention is um, if you're coming again for a one-year course, you would only be getting one-year work permit. If you get doing two years course, you're getting three-year work permit. So three years is like the max that you'll be get. Of course, you can extend those. So you have to make sure that uh, you know you're taking the time to understand those. And then when once you have your work experience and you're ready to apply, make sure you have all the documents with you. Give your IELTS before because as Sakshi mentioned as well in the previous slide, it is only for it is valid for two years. So it's a good way to start earlier um, to you know for your IELTS. So when I started my job, I gave my IELTS then, but then after one year when my work experience was over, then I was able to apply for PR, but I already have the IELTS, so I didn't have to stress about the IELTS. So um, it is it is a lengthy process. There's a lot of documentation required, but it is a last process. You really have to focus on your connections, your network, and how your journey is. I promise you, you will be able to get the PR. If your focus is just PR, and you don't know what happens in the meantime, you lost yourself, but your focus on PR, well, you might not even get that point, right? So you have to make sure you have a good, smooth journey, that transition from a student to a PR. You have to make sure in between that you have to complete those dots in order to be successful and be a PR. And of course, we are able to help you. You can email us any specific questions you have for admissions. You know, of course, for PR, uh, we are partnered with the ICCRC members. But again, uh, that is something as a last process, but we will be able to assist you with um, any questions you have. Like if you have uh, questions regarding the uh, journey and the process, please make sure to keep answering, uh, quite, uh, keep posting your questions. I'm out of words now. Um, and I see that uh, we have some questions coming in. So I guess Sakshi and I can take it. Um, and you already know how to contact it, contact us. This is our email. You can also WhatsApp us if you are um if you're from different countries. Okay, let's see okay. what questions. Um uh, Ravneet, I would like to add a few things here. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for let me just add myself on on uh facebook as well just give me two seconds i think yeah. i'm viewable as well so thank you very much Ravni. first of all for your lovely presentation it's always enjoyable and thank you very much sakshi as well uh you guys were um were amazing and uh i hope you guys uh who are participating who are you know attending this session can get very uh, much benefits from whatever you guys have shared um the, thing, the only thing about the uh, the uh, PR thing is that we work directly and connected with ICCRC members. So what it means is uh, the application is basically uh, processed by by them. Uh, guys, I hope my voice is not uh, repeating myself, right? No, it's fine. Okay. So just because I'm just listening myself, so that's why I'm thinking that not everybody's listening to me twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just to clear that the immigration side or the study permit side applications are processed through our ICCRC members which are connected with us for example and um, whereas student solution are more into the study applications so if you're applying to to Canada for example and you are com you know you're, you're you're not sure how to apply for example what documentations are required but more importantly you want the process to be at ease so that is where we come into play and make sure with kind of experience we have it kind of you know um either it's application support or whether it's an ongoing process for application either it's a post-grad level either it's a undergrad level feel free to contact us on the on the slide which is uh, uh, on the email address which is admissions at studentsolution.co.uk so uh, now regarding to the questions of course what we can do is um, we can go i mean I, I just have to see because there are quite a few questions either on whatsapp on facebook on zoom so i just want to see that how is it going and then of course we will start answering one by one all right yeah 
Uh, let me just see. Uh, I'm just gonna go first on the ones. I think the uh, some of the questions have already been answered on Facebook. I'm just going through the ones on Zoom. And if I can correctly see where exactly, give me just two seconds. I'm just trying to see the questions. All right, so, so the first question is about the progression, um, progression from, from your country to Canada. Yes, it is possible. Um, so students who basically are in, um, who are studying right now in United Kingdom and then they are basically doing their bachelors. So bachelors in the UK is three years, whereas in Canada it's a four year program. So there is a possibility that if you have completed your one year from any British university, and if you are coming to Canada, that is most likely gonna be into, you know, individually, it depends upon individual universities and the program you are going into but uh, it is possible that you may go into the second year of a four-year program in Canada. So it's more, more likely to be happening with the programs like computing or business, of course, but it goes on, it varies from program to program and university to university. And uh, this, is, uh, this is possible, uh, but as I said, it is, it's a little more uh, complicated process than just applying. And uh, that is where, you know, just contact us if you're looking for next session, we will be able to look into that. So progression from one university to another university is possible. It just take a little longer process than a usual admission process. Um, I'm just looking at the questions and then of course, if it's related to uh, Sakshi or if it's related to Ravneet, then of course I will ask them to reply on that. So the other question is, um, is uh, year 10, year 12 report required for master's degree when we are have a four? Um, so it's an admission related question. And of course, um, I will just uh, see if I can uh, give my input or if we need to do a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, uh, work on this one. Give me just one second. Uh, yeah, so is year 10, year 12 report required for a master's degree when we have four year bachelors? Uh, this is a, this is actually, you know, um, depend upon many, uh, many universities as per, as per their requirements. Some universities will be, um, will be flexible enough in terms of their, you know, if, you're, if you need a grade 12 report or no, if you have already have a four year bachelor's degree. But I will, I will suggest it's not a literally rock. Um, it's like uh, you have to follow and you need that 10 year or grade 10 or grade 12 transcript as well if you have a four-year bachelor's degree already so when you're applying for a master's degree of course but if you feel your bachelor's degree you know might not i mean it's always good to have a, good to have a, all the transcript and submit together but uh, in the most important thing i would suggest is that your personal yeah, matters has to be provided, has to be provided to be um, uh, other other um, I think I will just mute uh, one of these guys. So, so yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, applying for a postgrad program at the master's level, yes, four years bachelor's degree transcript is for sure mandatory. But at the same time, it's not, uh, it's, you can't, I mean, it depends upon individual institution if they need a 10 plus two or a 10 year, 10 year 12 report, if they need that as well. Yes, please.
post graduation Can you guys hear me? Oh, sorry, I just muted myself and I was going to the question. Sorry. <laughs> um, so is the postgraduate visa duration for the master's degree same? So I think what it means is like postgraduate diploma program visa versus master's degree. What I, I feel. I think so, yeah. My, my uh, uh, input is that uh, it depends upon the length of the program. If it's a postgraduate diploma at a college level, um with a kind i mean of course the experts are the ones who are dealing with iccrc you know who are iccrc regulated persons and dealing with study permit with the kind of um uh, with the kind of results we have seen in the past in terms of uh, uh students who have received the visa we know that if it's a postgraduate visa um, uh, duration for about like 12 months of education you probably will get about 15 months or 16 months uh, visa on that and similarly, if you're applying for a master's degree, which will be like about two years, most of the time in Canada, you may probably will get about 25, 26, or maybe, you know, add about like four or five months on top of it. But this is on the basis of the experience we have seen the visa from students who have received in past. Of course, um, the, uh, our, our regulated ICCRC consultants uh, will be the ones who will be having more input on it. But Sakshi, do you want to add something on it? And was that the same case with you, uh, Ravneet? Yeah, and then most of the programs people are starting in fall. So that course, so say for example, the course when I did and most of 